Remember, if we're talking about gun control, it's a euphemism for people control. They don't want to control guns. They don't want to control inanimate objects. They want to control people. And when you have laws, they serve two purposes. Number one, to remove your freedoms. And number two, to put their hands, the government hands, deeper into your pocket. Because it's going to cost you. If you lose a right, it is going to cost you to get a semblance, not your whole right, but a semblance of that right back. And that's what they've done here in Oregon. And before I go over that, I like this meme right here. This is how gun control, which is really people control or sheep control works. A wolf attacks a sheep, killing it. Other sheep see that the sheep was killed by teeth. Those dangerous teeth. Teeth are dangerous. All the sheep agree. And then they remove their teeth and turn them in. But the wolf still has his teeth. <clears throat> I mean, seems simple, seems funny, but this meme is spot on. So we're going to talk about this. Oregon passes measure 114. If you're in Oregon, leave your thoughts in the comment section below, but Oregon passes measure 114, one of the strictest gun control measures in the U.S. I think the strictest still is New Jersey, if I'm not mistaken, if there's anything stricter, let me know. But I want to show you this real quick because the insanity that we're talking about here is off the charts. Oregon voters passed one of the country's strictest gun control measures, a long sought goal of the grassroots faith based campaign. This is that faith based campaign. They got a whole bunch of churches that got together and said, you know what? It would be a good idea if all the peasants didn't have guns, but all the guns and the power got transferred to the state. That'll make us feel safer because we got to stop all these mass shootings. We got to put an end to these, this, this senseless slaughter. If we could just save one person. Well, let me tell you. Your feelings and your safety don't trump my rights. They never have and they never will. Partial returns tallied as of 11-15 show measure 114 leading 51 to 49. That it's even that close is crazy to me. Most of the votes left to be tallied were in (laughs) Multnomah, Multnomah, Washington, and Clackamas counties all favoring or heavily favoring the measure. What measure? The people control measure. We have to have people control. We have to have gun-free zones. The measure will require Oregonians to obtain a permit, a permit, that's a permission slip from the government. You can't do this unless we say so. So the government specializes in taking an inherent natural right that you have away from you and then saying, hey, do you want part of this right back or um, the, the semblance of this right back? Then you're going to have to pay us. And that's where you lose your rights and you lose your money. <clears throat> and you lose your power in the process. To obtain a permit to buy a gun after completing a firearm safety course. So what's going to happen with firearm safety course? Well, you're probably going to have to give your ID. You're going to probably have to fingerprint. There's probably going to be a background check, which equals what? Registration. What's the step after registration? Confiscation. Now they know who has what and what your background is. That sounds like a violation of the Second Amendment, which shall not be infringed. This is basically an infringement measure. You could call this, you could call these people infringement seekers. That's what they seek. They seek to infringe on your rights because they claim that they want other people to be safe and how those other people are going to be kept safe. They deny history and what history teaches us about putting all the power in the hands of the state. So, so you can only be safe if the government has all the guns. See, they're not against guns or people having guns. They just don't want you to have them. And would ban the sale or transfer of magazines that hold more than 10 rounds of ammunition. Ban means if you hold them when they pass this law, then you automatically become a criminal in the eyes of the state because you own a magazine that has more than 10 rounds. It also will close the so-called Charleston loophole. You know what? You know what the loophole is? That loophole is it's this big hole, gaping hole of freedom through which you can pass without any kind of infringement. They want to close that because they want to take they want to implement all these infringements and take away all the freedom. 
by requiring state police to complete full infringement checks, let's just call it what it is, on buyers with permits before any gun sale or transfer under federal law. Now, firearms dealers can sell guns without a complete background check, infringement check, if the check takes longer than three business days. And we can't have that. That's still an infringement, guys. What do you see with, with the rest of what they're saying? This Reverend right here, Mark Newton says, we began this historic campaign to save lives with faith. And that is the alibi of tyrants. The safety and security of the people will always be the alibi of tyrants. They're like, hey, we can justify this. This is going to keep people safe. We can justify trampling your rights. We can justify charging you for your rights. We can justify removing your freedoms. And we remain hopeful as we wait for all the votes to be counted. We thank everyone that helped put Measure 114 on the ballot and supported us every step of the way, gathering signatures, knocking on doors, making phone calls, and turning those precious ballots in. So they were really, they were frothing at the mouth to take away these people's rights. Even their own, here, here, I'll give up my rights too, as long as we can just keep one person safe. High support for the measure was in Multnomah County, 75 to 10, 75 to 25. And, and in Washington County, 62 to 38. Clackamas County, 52 to 48. A little bit more sanity there in Clackamas County. And Deschutes County, a little bit more, a little bit more sanity, but still too much insanity for my taste. It drew national attention, gaining support from mass shooting survivor, including D Hoggers, who became a People control activists, call it what it is, after the 2018 shooting at this place right here that you can't, uh, you can't identify and you can't verbalize if you're a particular channel. We know that throughout U.S. history, change, this is D. Hogg, change rarely comes from the federal government. Most often it comes from state and local governments. And this is an example of everyday people using their state government and working together to create a safer community to stop this violence before it touches them too. And here's the grave irony of people who call for gun control measures and say they're against gun violence, which is also euphemistic. There's no such thing as gun violence because inanimate objects don't commit violence. People do. People use tools. It's like, hey, we're going we're gonna to outlaw bricks and rocks because people use bricks and rocks to harm other people. Good luck. You're not going to outlaw bricks and rocks. And if you decide to criminalize the innocent people who hold the bricks and rocks, then you're going to empower the evil people who use those bricks and rocks against you to victimize you. So the grave irony here is that when they're trying to create a safer community to stop this violence, they're actually asking, begging their politicians to initiate violence on you because how else are they going to enact this gun legislation? This gun safety legislation. Oh, they're going to do it by the barrel of a government gun. That's how they're going to enforce it. Like we said often in the past, Washington said, government is not eloquence. It's not reason. It's force. And like fire, it's a dangerous servant, a fearful master. Freeland, now a forestry student. Let's see. The chief petitioners behind this measure, all these people right here, stopped by the church and spoke with supporters in the church basement. The interfaith group that group that crafted the measure. So they are responsible for this. Launched shortly after the Parkland, Florida school shooting four years ago. This killed 17 students and staff, injuring 17 others. The group ran out of time to collect enough signatures or similar petitions that year. It says days before the election, the backers marched to North Portland's Dawson Park to urge support. It says we can't stand idly by when our neighbor bleeds. It's our attempt to make a difference. Okay, you don't want to stand idly by while your neighbor bleeds? Then pack them and rack them, man. If you don't want to stand idly by, then why don't you empower yourself on behalf of those who are weaker than you instead of asking the politicians to make everybody weaker than you by criminalizing people, innocent people who actually possess firearms? Because this is what this does. It's truly infuriating that people can't see this. And they're all swept up and, oh, yeah, 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 we're against gun violence. No, you're not. No, you're not. You want government-sanctioned, government-funded, government-initiated gun violence to come against innocent people who've literally done no nothing wrong. So who's, who's guilty of the greater crime? The kid who walked into the school and just started spraying everybody? Or the person who's actually requesting that gun violence be initiated against everybody, every innocent gun owner who never harmed anybody? Who's guilty of the greater crime? 
says under the proposal, listen to this. Here's how you, here's how just evil this is under the proposal. Anyone who wants to buy a gun will have to obtain a permit. Please government. Let me have something. I have the perfect right that I was born with. It's called unalienable rights. Oh, they're, they must not be too unalienable since people can take it away. Unalienable means nobody gave it to you and nobody can legitimately take it away. So to buy a gun, you'll have to have a permit, permission slip from the government. You'll have to pay an anticipated $65 fee at least. That This knocks poor people. $65, I, I need that money to, to live. Complete an approved firearm safety course at their own expense. Knocks more people, poor people out of uh, defending themselves. Submit a photo ID, be fingerprinted and pass a criminal background check, which by the way, will be put into a database, which equals registration, which is the step before confiscation. Proponents, proponents raised 2.4 million and people who are again, oh, one of the donors was uh, Steve Ballmer's wife. And Steve Ballmer is the former CEO for Microsoft and current owner of the Los Angeles Clippers NBA basketball team. I'm sure that they are protected with a 24 seven armed security detail while they're contributing $750,000, $2.4 million to ensure that you become criminalized. If you want to protect yourself as well, opponents raised a fraction of that just over $200,000. Isn't it, isn't it sad that you have to raise money so that you can retain rights? This isn't land of the free home of the brave. It's land of the fee home of the slave. And part of that came from the National Rifle Association. We, knew, we know that they're pro background check because the Nick's instant background check, according to the president of the NRA, said that if it wasn't for the NRA, hey, uh, the back, Nick's instant background check, check system wouldn't even exist at all. We created it. We created the legislation. We got it passed. And now we got the infringement check system. Thanks, NRA. Appreciate that. You constitution tramplers <clears throat> says the ballot measure is estimated to cost the state this ballot measure this measure 114 is going to cost the state in the first two years 55 million dollars in the first biennium which is the first two years and about 50 million dollars each successive uh biennium so every two years it's going to cost 50 million dollars which means 25 million dollars a year and it says the revenue to local government permit fees is projected to be up to $19.5 million. So they're going to lose money on the deal, they say. But this is all about money. It's a transfer of wealth and power. It transfers the people's power to the politicians because the politicians will be able to uh, afford arms and armed security, but you won't be able to. And of course, they'll be exempted because they're government and you're not. So this transfers wealth and power from the people to the po political parasites who want to get this going, including all these faith-based organizations, which uh, are calling for government-sanctioned, government-funded gun violence, if that were such a thing. Evil. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and global thought police in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell notification icon. Give it a thumbs up. Share it with everybody you know. And don't forget to subscribe to my private email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. And don't forget to grab a shirt because it really helps the channel out.